So on a recent episode of the Dipped in Tone podcast, Rhett and Zach interviewed a guitar player called Julian Large. Now while I've heard that name crop up quite a lot, I've never actually listened to any of his music and the podcast got me intrigued because he came across so well, he seemed like such an interesting guy that I thought I had to do a bit more research. I'm going to listen to uh, listen to my first bits of Julian Large and uh, react to them for you guys as a guitar player who is always trying to broaden my horizons inspiration-wise and playing-wise. This first song we'll listen to is going to be called Speak To Me and it's from the album Speak To Me. I have no idea what to expect. Let's just get into it. Okay. So immediately great groove, great riff that sounds kind of simple but has this jazzy fusiony flavour to it. Oh, it's so loose. It's that sort of lazy guitar playing that is so precise. It's lazy but precise and it's so intentional and it's it's really hard to do. You know, the rest of the rhythm section, the drums and the bass are kind of kind of driving. It's quite a fast-paced song. But Julian on the guitar is just like, it's like he's melting into the strings, it's so cool. Let's, let's talk about the guitar tone, so it's this thick, warm tone. It's, what, it's kind of what I'm going for, it's what I dream my guitar tone to be like. Very warm, very round, but still very, still very articulate. It's kind of a perfect example of the best clean sounds in the world are actually ever so slightly overdriven. Every time he comes back to the main theme, it's developed in some way. This time, this time round, you know, we're nearly three minutes into the song and he's sort of added a bit more dissonance to that main theme, just to kind of add a bit of gurn face, shall we say. Oh man, Julian, just from one song, he's a master. I'm looking forward to getting into some more tunes here. This next song is from the album Omission. And it is also, the song is called Omission, so let's have a check. Let's check it out. Oh, an acoustic song. Oh, what an incredible acoustic guitar tone. It's so warm and earthy, it's beautiful. Kind of sounds like a smaller bodied acoustic, but what I like about it as well is that it kind of sounds like it's got old strings on. I like that vibe, that's my sort of thing. Completely different to the first song. Oh. I don't have anything to say, this is just... It's just, just like a blanket of warmth and yeah. It's it's like it's a really earthy acoustic track, but it still has a groove and a pulse. I love that chord change. Oh, that chord change gets me every time. Hits me in the feels. I don't know what it is, but it's just where it lifts. Hanging way behind the beat. Oh, getting a bit shreddy. He knows exactly when to push a beat or, you know, be right on top of the beat and he knows exactly when to hang way back from the beat. That's one of the most emotional instrumental songs I've ever heard. This one is called Day and Age and it's from World's Fair, the album. Much more of a solo acoustic song. I love the way that it's recorded. I love these sort of acoustic type songs when you can hear the player breathing. And it sounds like a weird thing, but it... I think I just love that in a production. As a guitar player, it's also interesting to hear how the breathing affects the phrasing. That kind of sounded like there were two guitar players then, but I think he's just playing the bass line, the chord line, with the melody on top. It blows my mind when people pull that off well. Hear the breath, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. It's almost got like a nursery rhyme vibe to it. Kind of reminds me of Toy Story. Yeah. Another stunning, stunning song. Okay, full band. This feels like the jazziest so far. It also is reminding me a lot of like John Schofield. You know we talk about the brown sound with Eddie Van Halen. This is like the brown sound of clean tones. I'm pretty happy with that. You, you, you can have that one. This feels the flashiest. Oh. That bit was like, kind of heavy. That was like heavy note choices. That If you played that with some distortion, that would have been like, pretty brutal. Oh, back to a bit of danciness. All right, 
The two acoustic tracks really made me feel something, which I wasn't expecting. The two band ones, the first one especially, I really, really liked because it had, you know, recurring themes that developed throughout and, you know, returned to us as like little bits of ear candy in the background. I also thought the band was vibing in that first song. The playing, the tones throughout are just gorgeous. All the performances, in incredible musicians at their best. Not just Julian, but like the rest of the band as well. They sounded sick. Okay, so we've got uh, one or two more songs to listen to, but we're going to watch the videos as well. So we've got the first one here, Tributary. It's got half a million views. Uh, this is an official music video, so I don't know if it's a live performance or what, but we're going to check it out. You know, the tone is just superb. The playing is superb. Somebody is trimming trees outside. That's the thing when it gets like, starts to get nice weather, everyone's out in the garden making noise. How dare they? So it's a proper trio. Look how tiny that drum kit is. I love that. Oh, let's let's go back. Let's see if we can see some pedals. There's just a little pedal board here. I don't know what's on that, but even so, we're just kind of plugging into a Fender little deluxe, Blackface Deluxe. Oh, so rich, this tone. So deep but still incredibly clear. I think that's his signature Collins, isn't it? Oh yeah, stunning guitar. And the band's in. Oh, some nice hybrid picking going on there. Again, he's behind the beat, just the perfect amount. It's beautiful. I love those kind of falling down licks, that like... See, I love when you watch a video like this and you see the communication between the band. I mean, so far it's just like, doesn't get much better than this, does it? I love this kind of cinematography as well, where it's just like, it's one camera, doesn't cut, it's just following the performance. It's perfect. It's like the definition of perfect. Yeah, just take a break, Julian. You you earned it. Chill out. Oh, that is so cool. Just the confidence to do that in your music video, just to be like, I don't need to do anything. perfectly imperfect, the way it's lazy, but the way it's so calculated still. Oh, man. The space is just amazing. makes it look so easy. I hate him. <laughs> I don't. That, yeah, that was, that was perfection. I wish I could play guitar like that, but I can't. And I don't think I ever will. Anyway, next one. This is Nocturne, live in Los Angeles. And he's playing a Telecaster. Lovely. It's got that, uh, has anyone ever seen that uh, snarky puppy gig? Was It's like, we like it here, we like it here, where everyone sort of sat around the the, uh, the band. I'd love to attend a gig like this, it's, just, it's so cool. It's a nice Telecaster. You could tell that's been played. Look at the wear on the neck. Ah, oh, the dynamics. So you can play the sort of simple stuff, but he adds this jazzy twist to it. You know, those are sort of like reasonably standard melodic licks that, you know, I would play. But it just sounds different coming from Julian's fingers. Again? 
got Toy Story vibes. <laughs> yeah, I said that about one of the acoustic tracks. It's kind of got that kind of childlike, hopeful, you know, conjuring up memories of, you know, it's kind of got that thing going on. Oh, he's so locked in. I'm not sure I've ever seen, well, what I'm going to say is that I think this is the closest I've ever seen a guitar player use the guitar like an extension of himself. I know people talk about that a lot, but this is, this is that. This is that. Julian and that Telecaster are one. Okay, let's let's have a look at gear. I spot something cool. What is that? If that is his rig for this performance, then my thoughts on Julian have just gone through the roof. That looks like an old tweed champ. It's tight. That's a, that's an eight inch speaker, and in that's shortly five watts probably. If that. Oh my god. I'm not sure I've ever seen anybody play one of those like actually in a real life scenario. It kind of gives you an indication on the of the volume that these guys are playing at. I'm sure that pe you could have a conversation over this, but playing at that lower volume really allows you allows you to accentuate the dynamics throughout the song. That's amazing. Again, I don't see any pedals, which kind of upsets me because you know I've spent the last ten years of my life searching for the best pedal but clearly all you need is a Telecaster, a cable and a champ <laughs> to be the best guitar player in the world. Okay. So that, that line there kind of conjures up memories for me. That seems really familiar. Either I've heard it before or he's just pulling at you know, pulling at something from kind of that's locked deep within us. See, that sounds like it's from Shrek. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying that. Love that. I've learned a lot from that. From, you know, never hearing Julian Large play a note to listening to, you know, five or ten tracks from him. All kind of vastly different. Amazing. I love the simple approach to tone, but his tone is flawless throughout. The best clean tone I've heard, I think, ever. Go check out some Julian Large if you haven't already. Go check out his Dipped in Tone interview uh, with Zach and Rhett as well, because that's kind of where I've heard of him. Uh, if you, Also, if you just like this style of video, if this was something that you're into, let me know and I'll do some more. There you go. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next time.